Hello guys and welcome back to the Traitors Australia and today we're going to be talking about episode 11. Episode 11 was a crazy one. It may it, it broke my heart. I got to be honest. We're getting towards the end and we've come down to five people that I genuinely feel like I know quite well from what I've seen on this series. Some more than others, and then there's just big up Teresa, honestly, big up Teresa, we love Teresa. So, there's not really much else to say in this introduction, other than make sure you're liking the video, make sure you're subscribing, this channel has been popping off, it's slowing down because of Big Brother finishing, but we're hoping to kick things into overdrive now, we're finishing this up, I've got a couple more Traitors videos coming, and then we've got Apprentice to catch up on, we've got, what else to catch up on, uh, Big Brother Canada, if you guys are watching that, um, Apprentice, Maths Australia, and also, there's a new show starting tonight called The Underdog, Josh Must Win. I'm very intrigued. I'm excited to see how that works. But other than that, thank you guys very, very much for watching. Let's get on with the video and make sure you subscribe, guys. Come on. So we are going to start with breakfast. And breakfast was a very, very interesting one because obviously we had the aftermath of the death row situation. Essentially... Kate was recruited and Paul was murdered and now it's definitely set the course for the rest of the game. It's very very clear that Alex has brought Kate on board to get rid of her at some point. It really does feel like that and I think the rest of everybody around the table is very sort of like, well, out of the three people up for death row, it really makes sense of the, for them to get rid of Kate, because Kate's just got rid of two traitors. So if Kate walks back through that door, it's going to look suspicious. And I was sitting there going, now, there's, there's two different ways this could play out. It could work really in Kate's favour, or it could work really against her. It could work for her in the sense of they might think, oh, maybe the traitors are keeping Kate because they want us to think that she's the traitor, but actually it's a double bluff. But then they could also be like, well, Kate, you're a traitor because you should have, you should have died. So it's, it's really is just mind games trying to work out what's happening and who, what, it's, it's basically a big game of chess, this game. And it's fascinating to watch the moves happen because once the moves happen, there's no going back. You just have to roll with the punches then. That's why, like, Marielle making that move and being like, yeah, Fee said this about, um, Teresa. And Kate was like, rah, that's not right. Exposes a traitor. Nigel, Alex brought up one little thing that planted a seed, grew into a mighty oak. They voted him out. Alex is doing a phenomenal job at the moment. Like, I don't, I don't think you guys understand. We've never been in a situation where every single one of the original traitors has been voted out. That's crazy. Like, and before the finale, I mean. <sighs> this is crazy, this series. I, I, I genuinely don't know how they got it so wrong with season two. Because you can't even blame it on the celebrities. Because most of the celebrities were gone by the halfway mark. Because they were famous and so they knew the game or whatever. So, like, I don't know. You can't really blame the second season of the celebrities because this one's so, so good. Um, Yeah, essentially, Paul was killed. Um, Got nothing else to say about that. He wasn't a character on this show. He had one episode where we got to see glimmers of a personality. But the rest of it he was just edited out of. And that is really, really unfortunate. But... The traitors are hoping that by killing Paul, they're going to put Teresa in the spotlight, which I haven't quite worked out how that works, but we'll just have to roll with it, I guess. I think it's because Paul was voting for Teresa. But then again, we've seen so many times that when you vote out the person or if you vote, if someone gets murdered, don't look at the person who they were blaming because it's too obvious for it to be that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But that was pretty much breakfast. It's time to move on to the mission. So the mission was really interesting in the fact of it wasn't actually that interesting at all. No, it was actually quite, it was actually quite cool. 
It was very tense. They had to split off into three groups. I think Lewis had to go twice in two different groups. And they had to run across some beams. Not beams. That's completely false. They had to run across some sort of... Uh, I can't even... Like, bridges, I guess? Between, like, different towers? I don't know. It was, it was an odd one. Then they had to run to the top of a tower, see the colour sequences, match the colour sequences to, like, different codes i guess and then use the codes on the safe it, oh, it was a little bit complicated and there was just so many colors and i actually don't know how they managed to remember all them colors because i was sitting there going green blue yellow yellow red yellow red and i was like oh my god my brain hurts and i haven't even gone halfway down yet there were genuinely about 15 colors per combination so each of them either had to remember like eight or seven and it was just it was just tough because there were so many times where they got it just slightly wrong there was like one that was switched out and it was just like oh so long for no reason whatsoever so yeah the mission was a bit long a bit tedious to watch as well because it was just them running backwards and forwards and i feel like they do not give them enough time on these challenges 15 minutes is not enough time like, we saw they managed to get two out of three of the safes. And if they'd have genuinely just had another 15 seconds, I think they would have got it. I think they would have got it. And that's the frustrating part about these challenges is, like, if there was just a little bit more time. <sighs> we saw that also with the with the train challenge earlier on in this series. If they just had a little bit more time, they'd have made it and they'd have won more money. But they did manage to make £10,000. So they're up to $210,000 not pounds, my bad, um, so yeah, they're, they're doing pretty well with the prize pot, I won't lie, it's not shabby like it was at the start of the series, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they're doing, they're doing all right, actually, they're not doing as badly as they were, like I said, but yeah, let's just move on to some suspicions, I think, so, suspicions, 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 it's getting to that point in the game where a lot of people believe there is only one traitor left, because obviously, they don't know about last night's secret recruitment. Which I do feel like is really unfair. Like I said, I really don't think they should have been allowed to recruit and murder. I feel like that was a bit much. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, it just feels a bit OP. Because the last time that they recruited, they weren't allowed to murder anyone that night. And so it made it obvious that something had happened. Whereas like they genuinely do not know that there are two traitors left in this game. I think Liam, not Liam, is it Liam? No, Lewis, Lewis, Liam was the other useless guy in the final, <laughs> in the last, in, in the second series. Anyway, uh, Lewis does believe that there are two, but obviously it's getting to that point where you have to look at everybody. People are suspecting Kate, people are suspecting Teresa, but Craig and Lewis are bringing up Alex's name as well and questioning whether it could be her, but Craig says he genuinely does trust her which is not going to bode well for him in the end because, like, I have a feeling Alex... Alex is in this to win this. She wants that money. And I'm just... I'm just scared that Craig's going to get backstabbed by another friend and he's never going to be able to trust anyone ever again. Um, Lewis is heading in Teresa's direction, which I think is smart. It really is coming down to Lewis versus Teresa. Which way will the house flip? um the house which way will the group flip will they flip towards Teresa? will they flip towards lewis i genuinely don't know um alex is trying to work out who will banish kate at the end and keeping them around and she thinks that Teresa is going to be tougher to manipulate than lewis so she's going to put her vote on Teresa to get Teresa out because Teresa can't be swayed by anybody she can't be it's just one of her things. She's very, very headstrong and she believes what she believes and doesn't let anybody else tell her what to think, which, I mean, is a great attribute as a person, but as someone in the game, it's you're, that's not helpful for a play at the end of the day. Um, When it comes to Kate and Alex trying to pin it on Teresa, that's when Kate was like, hmm, did you see that Teresa wasn't very surprised to see me this morning? It's almost as if she knew I was going to walk through that door. She's planting them seeds. Both her and Alex are doing a fantastic job of planting seeds at the moment. But obviously, I think Kate is really, really hyper aware that Alex will backstab her at any moment. And so 
she started to plant some seeds on Alex. And Craig has already made like a final three with uh, Kate and <laughs> Kate and Alex because they're the two people that he does trust, which I find so funny. Poor Craig, honestly, this poor man. Um, and the way that Kate was bringing up Alex is like, hmm. If you look at Nigel and Marielle, they really did lay low until like we exposed them, and then suddenly they there was like a lot of evidence there. Could the same be true for Alex? Is she laying low? Is she being quiet? Is is that what she's doing? And I was like, hmm, hmm. Kate is really trying to... Because the smart thing, the smart play for Kate to do right now is vote Alex out here. And then she has the, the plausible deniability of, there are no traitors left, guys. Clearly that must have been the last one. But obviously, Teresa doesn't think it's Alex, and she went and actually told Alex what Kate had said, and I was like, no, no, because now Alex is aware that Kate is onto her. Oh, no. Oh, this is so poor. This is so bad. And genuinely, going into this round table, I had no idea what was going to happen. I was like, rah, this could go any, any way. The only person I'm guaranteeing is not being voted out of this round table is Craig. He's the only one I know is safe <laughs> because nobody has brought his name up. Not once. I don't know what this man has to do to be guilty. I reckon sure. I, I reckon he could kill in plain sight and people would still be like, oh, he's definitely a faithful. Oh, we do love our Craig. So the round table was tense. Teresa started it straight off by going, it's Lewis. It's Lewis, guys. It, it has to be Lewis. It's got to be Lewis. And I was like, ha, huh, okay. Then Craig was like, yo, you were lucky for getting that shield. Because if you hadn't have got that shield, you would have been out on your ass. What have you got to say for that? And Alex was like, yeah, it's weird that you went for the shield, considering you weren't even on death row. And he was like, well, I knew you guys were coming for me in the banishment, so I wanted to secure my safety. I will say, I will say this about Lewis. He did defend his self, himself well because then it came to the point of Craig was like, but the only re the only thing that's stopping me from voting you, Lewis, is why would Lewis, why would Nigel not vote for Marielle or feel uncomfortable voting for Marielle, but so blatantly vote for you instead? That's the only reason I do not think you're a traitor because you're showing all of these traitorish things, right? You're showing all of these traitorish things. But why would Nigel not want to vote for Marielle, even though he was in on the plan, but he'd vote for you? Because if you were, an, if you were a traitor, he wouldn't want to do that. And I was like, Craig, Craig's cracked it. It's, it's plausible truth. It's plausible facts that show that Lewis is a faithful and genuinely didn't expect it. But like, we've kind of proven he is a faithful through that because yeah, it was just, it was just really, really good. And then guys, this is where, this is where it got juicy, juicy, juicy. Kate goes, Alex, you've, um, you've never received a vote at this round table. And Alex was like, I don't know. I don't know. She actually said, I don't know. And I was like, Alex, you've got to, you've got to, you, uh, somehow you've got to come up with a better defense than that. You've played this game blindingly. Your name has never been brought up at the round table. Now it has. And you're crumbling. And then she went, oh yeah, maybe I'm, Maybe I'm staying, maybe I'm still here because I was really close to Nigel and Marielle and like they wanted to keep me around because they knew I wouldn't vote for them. It's a plausible truth. Like I said with Lewis, it's plausible. That's the same reason why Craig's here and obviously Kate, um, Kate, what's her face? Teresa and Lewis are here because they're names that have been coming up. So obviously they're going to be kept around. But. I just thought, Alex, you're so lucky that nobody 
wanted to question you further because then Teresa turned it straight back on Kate and went, yo, Teresa, I think you should have died this morning. Why didn't you? And Kate was like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> you weren't surprised when I walked in. So maybe you're the one we should be asking. And I was like, mm, okay, this is interesting. And then the question of why didn't Teresa vote for Nigel came up. And Teresa was like, well, that's because it was between me and Nigel. And I didn't think that Nigel was a traitor. So I had to vote for somebody else because I didn't believe it was him. Obviously I was wrong, but like, where are you? And then, and then this was, this was the defense that made me go, actually, she's got a point. She was, she was saying something along the lines of, guys, where is your proof that I'm a traitor? And don't tell me so-and-so said it. What have you seen with your own eyes? Because if you didn't see it, it might not have happened. How do you know? How, what is, what is your proof? What is your evidence? And nobody came up with anything. Not a single person had anything to say back to that. And then Roger ended the round table there. So I've got to be a hundred percent honest out of all, all four people that were quizzed in this. Obviously Craig wasn't. Alex was the one that handled herself poorly, but obviously nobody backed up nobody applied any pressure to her but kate and it just was a bit awkward because she just went i i i, I don't know and i was like ha huh, that's your defense raw so voting time is going to be a quick short one but alex voted for teresa kate voted for teresa teresa voted for lewis lewis voted for teresa craig voted for teresa <sighs> it's gutting is what it is. It's gutting because Teresa deserved the world. She deserved the world. I loved her. She was such a fantastic part of this series. She had us laughing. She had us dramatized. That's not a word. She had moments where she was the best character. She was the main character of this series when there were no main characters. And this will be reflective in my ranking of her. It's got to be. But I have to say, this was an interesting series. Um, We've got one more episode left. There's no murder tonight. But obviously, we're, we're starting to realise that Alex is a phenomenal actress. Because when Teresa was innocent, this bitch broke down in tears. And was taken away by Craig sobbing and she's in the confessional going yeah it's all fake this woman deserves an oscar for this performance what is going on here and kate is now realizing how close craig and um alex are and she's thinking fuck i should have gotten rid of craig when i had the chance because there's no more chances to get rid of him other than banishment and that's not happening I have a feeling Craig's, uh, not Craig, Kate's fucked it. I almost wish she'd rejected because I think they could have won the game if she'd have rejected. I think she would have won. Or she would have been murdered that night. I actually don't know. Like I said, once the move's been made, the only speculation can tell us what would happen next. So that is all from today's episode. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Do all of that YouTube stuff that you guys do so well. I am going to be back tomorrow, potentially for an episode of a new series or for The Traitors Australia, whatever I get done first. But if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to keep on commenting, liking, subscribing, doing all that YouTube stuff that you guys do so well. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Keep on ranting. Bye now.